Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances of Glitter Shri Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we will be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse 15. And the chapter is entitled, The Pandavas Retire Timely. And we are very fortunate and blessed to have His Holiness Chandramani Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you. Um, I'm, whenever you're ready, March, you can uh, turn your video on. Oh, there we go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been here all the while. I forgot to do that. <laughs> it's okay, much, and I didn't want to start without you coming on. And I said, well, probably it might be a techie issue, so I'll just start anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maraj. And much without further delay, you can start the class. Good. And this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, 15th chapter, 15th verse. Yovishmakana guru salva chambu syavad badra vajanivarata mangalam maditasu dvecharo mama vidarata yutapanam hayur mamam sida drishya saha oja archa. It is he only who withdrew the duration of life from everyone and who, in the battlefield, withdrew the speculative power and strength of enthusiasm from the great military phalanx made by the Karava, headed by Bhishma, Karna, Drona, Shalya, etc. The arrangement was expert and more than adequate, but he, Lord Sri Krishna, while going forward, did all of this. Purport. So you're getting a little bit of a battle plan here. The absolute personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, expands himself by his plenary portion, Paramatma, in everyone's heart. And thus he directs everyone in the matter of recollection, forgetfulness, knowledge, the absence of intelligence, and all psychological activities. This is from Bhagavad Gita 1515. As the Supreme Lord, he can increase or decrease the duration of life for a living being. Thus, the Lord conducted the battle of Kurusheta according to his own plan. He wanted that battle to establish Yudhisthira as the emperor of this planet. And to facilitate these transcendental business, he killed all who were on the opposing opposite party by his omnipotent will. The other party was equipped with all military strength, supported by great generals like Bhishma, Drona, and Shalya, and who would have been physically impossible for Arjuna to win the battle had the Lord not helped him by every kind of tactic. Such tactics are generally followed by every statement, statesman, even in modern warfare, but they are all done materially by powerful espionages, military tactics, and diplomatic diplomatic maneuvers. But because Arjuna was the Lord's affectionate devotee, the Lord did all this himself without personal anxiety by Arjuna. This is the way of devotional service to the Lord. Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deva Gaudavani Pacharine Here we say Sunyavari Paschatya Deva Satarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gita Hara Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I'll be back in about 15 seconds. <laughs>
This chapter is interesting in, the, in that it illustrates the mood of separation from the Lord. As we have two moods that we develop in relationship to, to bhakti and in relationship to the Lord, that is meeting with the Lord and separating from the Lord. So Arjun, he had much association personal. He was Krishna's very close associate friend. They ate together. They sat together and spoke. They exchanged friendly talks together. Even they even slept on the same bed together. So the intimacy Arjun had with the Krishna, along with that, how Krishna arranged everything, as is described here, for the victory of the Pandavas, despite. The, all the odds, the, all the military odds were against the Pandavas. So wherever Krishna is, there is, where is, there is always victory. As explained in the very last verse in the Bhagavad Gita, wherever there is Krishna and his pure devotee, then there is opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality. These things are always there when Krishna is personally present. And so Arjuna is remembering, and he's speaking to you this year now, of all of the different occasions and different experiences he had with Krishna. And in that mood of remembrance, he's feeling great unhappiness that no longer Krishna is personally present. He feels lost. In previous verses, he mentions how he has his Gandiva bow, his powerful arms, and still he cannot do anything because the, person, the Lord has personally withdrawn his personal presence along with much of the power that Arjun was exhibiting that the Lord had given him, and then he pulled it back when he left. So Krishna, as it says here, it's illustrated, he is, he is everything. He is intelligence, he is memory, he is um, he is victory, he is um, forgetfulness also. He, Krishna, actually, when you carefully understand the principles that make up existence, you'll see that in all aspects, in all features, in all areas of life, the hand of God is personally present. Directly, for his devotees, as mentioned here, and indirectly, within the creation and in the lives of ordinary people. He is everywhere. He is everything. He is everything. And uh, one who takes shelter of Krishna can understand that. Others who don't take shelter of Krishna can other, never understand Krishna nor how he is conducting everything directly and indirectly through his energies. And here we have a very nice example of how in a very difficult situation, Arjuna, because he was the, devote, the friend and close and devotee of Krishna, he was able to overcome, conquer big, powerful, like Dronacharya was Arjuna's a martial art teacher. He taught Arjuna how to fight. Bhishma was so powerful that. He, he had the boon that he could not die unless he wanted to. And Shalya, he was also a very powerful general. You can read about him in the Srimad Bhagavatam also. All of these generals combined, there was no chance for the Pandavas to win, despite all of their military expertise. And then there was, of course, other powerful fighters. There was so many of them. Duryodhana was a powerful fighter. Many. 
But uh, in essence, it says here, it would have been physically impossible for our juror to win the battle. And this is a very important part of our Krishna conscious understanding. With the mercy of the Lord, Mukan Karoti Vachalam, Pangu Lagate Giri, Yat Kripa Taraham Bande, Tivurun Dinatarinam, which means that mercy comes through the spiritual master. And that mercy is so extraordinarily powerful that it can change a person's life from one complete defeat to ultimate success in all areas. And we see in the lives of the devotees who have become Krishna conscious, Baba talks about it a lot, and he's proud to, to show that many people who came to him were quite wretched, quite downtrodden, also very uh, much uh, following the ways of the world in a very enthusiastic way. Their lives were quite even worse than most materialists. But somehow or other, they had a little good fortune. That will be explained in our seminar in the USA, how that good fortune arises. Because they had that good fortune, they, they, they were able to come to Krishna consciousness and recognize the value of Krishna. Therefore, their whole lives have been changed. As Prabhupada would use in a very simple statement, I've changed hippies into happies. <laughs> uh, in other words, what he's saying is that people who have were downtrodden, who had rejected everything, who were living like urchins with no homes and no, no hygienic uh, ways of ma maintaining themselves, nothing. All they were interested in was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And that was the whole thing. And uh, but now they're following four regulative principles, chanting Hare Krishna, and also inspiring others to do the same thing: opening up temples, writing books. <laughs> so this is all the when one connects oneself to the Supreme Lord. Miracles happen in one's life. And the more one takes advantage of the mercy of the Lord, one will see miracles at every minute. <laughs> but we have to be enthusiastic. We have to show that we want the Lord. We have to show that we're willing to give up what we think is best for us and devote our life to service to the Lord. By doing that, everything becomes auspicious, and one can even conquer over the unconquerable form of life, which is known as death. A devotee can conquer death. No one can conquer death, but only, but a pure devotee can conquer death. Why? Because they have reached the platform of transcendence and they're no longer under the influence of the material body. And when they leave the body in this particular life, they no longer take birth again. So they no longer have to die again. So in that uh, in that arena of success, there is unlimited sources of success, happiness, and various types of benefits that the, the materialists struggle so hard to get, which is given to the devotees just ordinarily as Krishna's way of reciprocating with his devotees. So this is the power of the Lord. And of course, devotional service to the Lord is the supreme power in existence as Yamaraj himself. Yamaraj is the Lord of death. He has a very difficult service. He has to take the conditioned souls who are sinful and uh, judge them and then send them to their required punishments in different hells. But he 
even he knows that devotional service, and he says, Etavam Megalokeshmin, Umsam Dharma, Mahat Maya Srita, Bhakti Yoga, Bhagavati, Tam Nama Grihanadi. He says that devotional service, beginning with the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, is the highest activity within human society. Uh, one can be, you know, a president of a country. One can be a multi-multi-millionaire in a uh, very lucrative type of business. One can achieve many of the great things that people try to achieve in this world through their endeavors, but none of it is even coming close to devotional service because all of these other things are ephemeral, external, and we we'll finish the time. Where devotee is under the care of the Supreme Lord, the cause of all causes, the most powerful living entity in existence. Therefore, their lives are perfect. They have just like a little child will always think, well, I have a, I can't do much, but I have a very powerful daddy. And if I ever get in trouble, he will always save me. <laughs> so the, the child knows that he's very small, but he knows his father is great. So when we take shelter of Krishna, we reconnect with our eternal father in loving devotional service which is very pleasing in itself and rewarding in many of the benefits that, that the conditioned souls struggle so hard to get and never can really benefit from. So this is devotional service. So Arjun, we see here from this verse, because he had developed affection for the Lord, the Lord did everything for him. He didn't have to, you know, use military diplomacy in order to win the battle. He simply had to associate with the Lord. <laughs> and he did. And he fought his best because that is the job of a devotee, to try their best in their devotion and service. Doesn't mean that we have to be so accomplished in whatever we do, but we should try to do it in the best possible way. <laughs> is the perfection of the devotee's life. And so we can see how kind and available and uh, personal the Lord is in the life of the devotee. So we might think, oh, this is our June, but no, this applies to each and every devotee who surrenders fully to the lotus feet of the Lord in devotion and service. And that person uh, reaps all of the benefits. It says there is a statement in the scriptures, often quoted by Srila Prabhupada, that the servant of the king enjoys on the same level as the king. Just like if a king has a personal servant, you know, he, he gets a nice room to sleep in, he gets all of the nice meals that are available in the palace. He gets to associate with the king and he gets, you know, because he is the servant of the king, he's getting, you know, many rewards that come by way of his service. So in the same way, a devotee is so, so glorious, so benefit, so much benefited simply by coming, becoming a devotee. What to speak about the ultimate principle of devotional service, which is, to go back home, back to Godhead, and enjoy eternally in, in the association with the Lord and loving devotional service in the spiritual world. So um, anyone who rejects devotional service is ultimately suffering from brain damage. And anyone who takes up devotional service but doesn't take advantage of the opportunities they have, they are like a miser who has a million dollars but he can't find it he's hidden it somewhere but due to his memory he's lost understanding of where it is he can claim to be rich but he has no access to his money so a devotee who doesn't take advantage 
of the mercy of the Lord and engage fully in devotion and service is like a wealthy man who can't spend a penny. <laughs> So um, here we see the benefits of Arjuna. When Krishna saved him so many times from being destroyed by the opposite party, and he also gave him victory. And the Pandavids were considered glorious because they had won the war, but actually it wasn't for Krishna. And they wouldn't have any place it was only by Krishna's arrangement that they everything was successful for the Pandavas. But that was Krishna's will. He wanted the Pandavas to be the rulers of the world because he, they were his devotees. And he wanted devotional uh, principles to be the governing body, the governing principles to carry out the affairs in the world. So similarly, even today, um, we see that the world is overrun by the demons and demoniac types of policies, all the medical industries, dental industries, all of them uh, it's just extract all kinds of money from people and cannot give them any kind of help. I was just reading something the other day and somebody sent me this video, it's quite powerful where it says the, the number three cause of death in the United States of America is the medical treatment that people receive when they go to doctors and hospitals. Number three cause of death is the treatment. And that's the statistic given by the, the CDC. So, um, yeah. We see we live in a very dysfunctional society where we have no hope to get any help. If one who takes shelter of the Lord, the Lord takes care of the devotee in all aspects, both physical, mental, aesthetic, moral, and especially the bigly spiritual. <laughs> so when you have a good, rich father, you don't need to go anywhere else. <laughs> he's powerful, he's good. And he is the richest and the most influential. So that's the that's the benefit of becoming a devotee of the Lord. We have I think Mamarat's uh, internet kind of froze on his side, so we'll request your voice to please stay online. Maharaj will definitely join us back. He'll come back. Let's just be, um, we'll just wait for Maharaj to come back. <clears throat> Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Can we have some sort of discussion in the meantime? Yeah, you can uh, if you would like to share something. Um, no, not share necessarily. It's okay, wait, I'm getting a message. <laughs> he'll uh, i'm sure marsh will come back raj i'm 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 pretty sure Prabhu, he's having an internet -ish situation yes he just got cut off right at the brink of the the peak of the topic right i'm sure he'll come back if devotees would like to um 
yeah, Sri Devi is saying that uh, Marat said that when you have a good, rich, powerful father, you don't need to go anywhere else, which we do, actually, right, Sri Devi? Like we we do have a very rich, powerful father in Krishna consciousness, <laughs> so we don't need to go anywhere else. We just don't get the right understanding, you know, that we have a rich, powerful father. You're right. Very nice point, Sri Devi. I like that. And we're waiting to get out of jail. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I can't help but remember what Bhakti Tita Maharaj said, you know. He said that uh, love is what we really are, our soul is hankering for, and that pure and perfect love we experience only in our relationship with our eternal father, Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. when, we, when we develop that relationship, we can finally, one day, when we finally develop that relationship, we may get a little glimmer of understanding how much Krishna really loves us. Yeah. Wonderful point. Wonderful point for that. Yes, but we just need to continue in engaging in service, you know, like, and I, and I also like how Marad said, uh, uh, the someone who is not doing devotional service, I, he used a very <laughs> heavy term, I'm trying to remember, but I laughed so much. Uh, he said he's like a rich man who doesn't know where his money is. He's uh, forgotten where he's put it away. Forgotten, yes. And really? I said, oh my God, that's that's that is serious amnesia. <laughs> right. Serious amnesia. He's forgotten his own wealth and he can't get his high hands on it. He's such a miser that he doesn't even know where his own money is. That's really sad. That is such a good point. That is such a good point. Yeah, amazing. And isn't that so true? You know, I mean, of, I, I, I cannot say all of us, I'm, I can only speak for myself. That we have been given this matchless gift, this great treasure. But how am, am I taking advantage of it? No. I make right. excuses, I dawdle, I'm spiritually lazy. As Guru Maharaj said yesterday, all my disciples are lazy. And all these, you know, excuses that we make to not really dive into it full, full scale. It's it, it's so true because sometimes you know this cal this cal yuga is so wait Marge is back yay I saw like a kid half the time but <laughs> Marge is back <clears throat> there he is Raj your prayers have come true Raj Prabhu. <laughs> Okay, I think I spoke too soon, Raj Prabhu. <laughs> Raj Prabhu is going to melt. He's having a meltdown. <laughs> He's going to come back. It, it, it definitely must be an internet issue. But yeah, Sri Devi, you were saying something. Um, uh, uh, Where's Raj now? He came on and then he's in Croatia. Oh, where is, where is he? Oh, he's in Croatia. He's back in Croatia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's just this morning. I think the good Lord is testing us to see. He's in Ljubljana. He's in Slovenia. Oh, Lud no? Okay, so Slovenia, Ludiana. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very good, Maharaj. The Lord is just testing us. Are we going to stay on and be patient? Or are we just going to drop? So we'll stay on and be patient. You know, like, uh, like I, I really like the point where Marat said, um, the mercy comes from the spiritual master. That was very powerful for me when he said that, you know. Yeah. By the mercy of the spiritual master, a dumb man can speak eloquent poetry, a lame man can climb mountains. That's Maharaj. Blind man can see stars. Okay, we're back again. Yes, Maharaj, it's all yours, Maharaj. Yeah, I'm done talking. Is there any question? Oh. <laughs> um, yes, Maharaj, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions because we was having we were sharing our thoughts when we lost our connection. So, would like to ask devotees uh, to please switch on your cameras. I'm going to yes, Silfish Prabhu, go ahead, Prabhu. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. I just wanted to say thank you for such a wonderful class. Uh, I woke up feeling very low this morning. And through the miracle of Krishna, uh, you know, what you said today has just been absolutely beautiful and very uplifting. That, you know, Krishna is always with us. He's our father. And he's in our hearts as well as the Paramatma. And uh, I forget that. I doubt him. I lack faith at times, and it's uh, for your association and association of devotees. Uh, I can keep going. I just want to say thank you, Maharaj. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, it's true. Krishna is the only shelter, and the only, the only needed shelter. Also, we can find shelter in other things when we actually connect with Krishna. Also, he controls everything. He orchestrated things on all levels. He's so powerful that when nobody can even begin to measure his power or understand. And so a devotee is happy. It's like a little child is happy with a good father. And am I correct in saying that even material affairs Krishna is still conducting those, you know, especially if we have turned towards him. Well, materially, yeah, but for a devotee, there's nothing material. The devotee lives their life in relationship to Krishna, and the material activities they perform are just something that they have to do in order to live in this world. They don't put much hope or faith in material activities. They just carry them out. That's all. And when things get difficult in this material world, will Krishna help us through like give us a when we need it? I mean, don't try. You should understand material life is just the way it is. You're going to get problems. You're going to get challenges. You're going to get reverses. Just the way it is. And you see, even for great devotees, a lot of things go wrong on the material level. But they see it all in relationship to their execution of devotion and service. They don't get, they don't get, uh, not me say, disturbed by it or give up their spiritual life because of it. We see that people depend, people's spiritual life is is ba is balanced based on what happens to them materially. When they were materially in a good situation, they get enthusiastic about their spiritual life. When they're not, their spiritual life goes down for some reason. But it should be the opposite. <laughs> and when things are going wrong, or it's an inside that Krishna is showing some of you some special mercy to correct you, to uplift you, to educate you, to remind you of taking shelter. Everything is auspicious for the world. But we judge things according to how, from the material perspective, and therefore we, we, um, we, uh, we calculate our Krishna consciousness around that also. I've seen it. People's material life has gone down, something's gone wrong, something major. And you don't see them anymore in the temple or in association with devotees. It should be the opposite. I know for myself, if things go to the temple, that's the first place I think of going is actually the temple. Yeah, well, create a temple at your home. Prabhupada was saying, I was reading something this morning, Prabhupada was saying, people go out to different places and enjoy life and different kinds of entertainment. And they part of that entertainment is they go and they sing and they dance. Prabhupada said, just dance at home. <laughs> dance around the table. Play Kadambakana Maharaja's Kirtan and get lost. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Thank you for the nice question, Sulfesh Prabhu. Uh, Mother Sri Devi, go ahead. It's like today, I saw something I wanted to buy online. I thought it was something I could use. So I did all the work, pushed all the buttons, filled in all of the requirements, and the thing wouldn't register my my purchase. <laughs> I tried so many different things. <laughs> and then after three or four attempts, I said, I guess I don't need it. <laughs> so I just gave up. <laughs> I was just not just thinking, oh, my whole day's ruined. I wanted to buy this. I thought it could help me physically. But that eh, didn't work. Okay. I'm not going to forget it. <laughs> Maharaj, could I kind of bring you my temple quickly? Say that again. Uh, could I kindly show you my temple? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice little bookcase there. It's rather go cool and under there. Yes. Okay. I have a, a huge size picture of rather go cool and under. In my room, they're they're facial pictures, but they're huge. And they're like they're about one meter wide, and one half meter. The so one, yeah, this way they're about I don't know about three feet wide, and this one is about foot and a half. Big big pictures. Every time I walk into my room, there I see these beautiful pictures. Well, we keep pictures of the Lord there. That means the Lord actually is associating with the devotee. How if I say he can associate with in the deity form, in the picture form? In so many ways, the devotee can see and feel the association of the Lord through various means. Let me forget about this material world. We go on with our material life and we don't, you know, Whatever we have to do, we do. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so, what can you do? Sri Devi, you, you can go ahead with your question, Prabhu. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of Lord Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, such a nice explanation as well as a reminder of how wonderful Krishna is and that we truly can feel complete shelter. The thing is we tend to forget that. We tend to fall away from that realization. It's only when we come into class and hear you speak, then we suddenly wake up and remember. Then again, we sink back into our illusion. So I, I just... And also you said that when Krishna, when things are going wrong, this Krishna's way of uplifting you, correcting you, reminding you, telling you maybe you're not, you know, doing the right thing, you have to do things differently. So unless we learn that lesson, you're going to have to repeat that lesson over and over and over again. So how to understand when things are not going my way, how to understand that this is Krishna's special mercy and if I learn my lesson, then I won't have to keep repeating the same thing. Well, the tendency of the conditioned soul is forgetfulness. One of the tendencies. One of the anarchists, the material, conditioned soul comes to the material world to forget about Krishna. And that forgetfulness is there. And especially in Kali Yuga, memory is very much impinged upon by the by the by the atmosphere of Kali Yuga. It says memory, uh, longevity of life, uh, mercifulness, and bodily strength are all drastically reduced in this age. So people, you can't even remember what you did yesterday at this time. You'd have to really comb your brain to really think hard. What was I doing? Of course, if you're on if you're on this schedule here, yeah, 
But say you're in the middle of the day and you think, what did I do at 428 yesterday? And you'll be there like hours trying to figure it out. Our memories are just gone. So just practice. Remember, uh, remember not to forget. That's all. Try to remember not to forget. <laughs> Hope that helps, Sri Devi. Remember not to forget, Mara said. You wait, uh, Sri Devi, you're on mute. If you chant all, not... if you chant all the time, then you're okay. Then you you'll remember everything. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance. But then you'll forget to chant, so that that's another problem. <laughs> Raj Prabhu, you had your hand up, Prabhu. Go ahead. But I think you took it down, but I didn't want to forget you. Well, I was thinking about what, uh, what you were saying, Maharaj, when you're talking about Krishna's always doing everything. He's always arranging everything. And we know that when we're in that uh, material contaminated consciousness mode, and everything we're doing is a waste of time and effort. And it's just like birds under the net flapping around like crazy and they're just getting more entangled. But then when we are turning towards the path of bhakti, and if I carry on speaking, can you hear me? Absolutely, Prabhu. Go ahead. When we turn to the path of bhakti, then... What's happening there? Because we're trying to engage in acts of serve, devotional service, but we're not yet able to do that properly yet. So is Krishna still doing everything? Or does that come to a point where we are doing something? Everything depends on your degree of surrender. How much you surrender to Krishna is how much you remember Krishna. The devotee thinks, I can't do nothing, but by, by, by the grace of Krishna, I can do anything. One who sees me and everything and everything in me, I've never lost, nor is that person ever lost to me. So practice remembering Krishna. Serve Krishna as much as you can. Chant the holy names. Don't you with devotees? Process works. If you're, if you're spending, if you have 24 hours a day and you're spending one hour, you know, doing spiritual life, that means your, your material life, obviously, is going to be stronger. <laughs> how, many, how much time do you spend during the day chanting, reading, serving, associating, worshiping? Also, quantity helps to build quality. Papa talks about the stock market. I'm using an example. And if you live in the temple and you live outside the temple, then someone said, well, people say it's no different whether you live in the temple or outside the temple. And Papa said, it Theory, yes, but in practice, there is something different. And he used the example of a stock market, the stock exchange. When people are trading, buying and trading, if they're right there on the stock exchange, they're seeing all of the prices and they're making their purchases and selling immediately. If they're outside, they do everything through a communicated level 
and they don't get so many opportunities to buy and sell. The more you're in the spiritual environment, the more you have you're in the opportunities for devotional service. Make your home a temple. Establish worship in your home. And live in your home as if after you're living, that this your home is for sure. Krishna's place, he is the center. Offer your food to him. Whatever activities you've performed, try to offer them as a blessing to Krishna. Papa talks about the wino. <laughs> the wino, he's drinking, and all he wants to do is drink. So when he's at the end of his, his present bottle of liquor, he's thinking about the next one. He said, we have to be that same way. When we're doing our devotional service, we should be thinking after this finish, what am I gonna do next for Krishna? You want Krishna? You have to show it. If you want Maya, then you can't expect to get all the Krishna's mercy or get it in a different way. And the mercy will come in the form of correction and frustration. Hope that helped, Raj Prabhu. Thank you, Raj. Thank you, yes. Any questions from devotees that you would like to ask Maharaj clarification? Anything that you would, um, that's coming up from this very nice, sweet lecture. Maharaj, I have a um, question. Is, uh, this was asked, you know, of us a few years ago. And one devotee said, you know, if, if Krishna is going to, you know, uh, from remembrance uh, and forgetfulness, you know, Krishna controls what we remember, what we forget. And this devotee asked, but why would the Lord make us forget him? Why is it that he cannot not make us forget him? Why would he do that? No, he, he's fulfilling your desire. That's all. That's what that verse means. If you want to forget him, he helps you. If you want to remember him, he helps you. He's fulfilling your desire. He won't interfere with your desire. And only he can fulfill desires, no one else. So there's people who want to forget the Lord, so he, he allows them to do that. He gives them reasons why they should be doing something else and that that's what they want. But if the Lord wants to remember Krishna, then Krishna helps them to remember yeah? based on their desire. Thank you, Maharaj. He gives us that independence. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Sri Devi. So this is just a hypothetical question, Guru Maharaj. I'm asking it just to understand a little better. Supposing I'm just a very young bhakti, I've just come to Krishna consciousness, and I have this desire that now I must find a good husband. And from this point on, I'm only thinking, how can I get a nice devotee husband? How can I settle down, get married, and have a nice grihastha life in Krishna consciousness? And all the time I'm thinking, I have to get a husband. I have to get a husband. Then only I can make progress in Krishna consciousness. Now this becomes like a big stumbling block because my obsession is taking over everything else. So what, how we can overcome this kind of obsessive thinking? Stop it. <laughs> what else can we say? You're going in the wrong direction.
Well, you could say that if I please Krishna in my devotional service, he'll send me a nice husband. You think like that. If Krishna wants, he can send me a husband. I don't have to worry about chasing after one or looking around. All I have to do is serve Krishna and he'll provide everything I need. So it takes some faith. That's the principle of surrender that Krishna is the only provider who provides whatever is required. But we also here act as though it depends on you, but know that it depends on Krishna. So I've heard young, I, I personally have heard young couple, young men and women telling me, oh, yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah, to, yeah. I don't want that, to. That means act in devotional service, not outside of devotion. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Act in devotional service like it depends on not outside of it. So making efforts to find a, yeah, I mean a husband or a wife, would that be considered outside of devotional service? Where is that in the Bhagavatam where it says it's one of the requirements for example? Some of the no. verse. No, there is no such verse. <laughs> but I've heard a uh, young man tell me. I don't want to leave it all to Krishna, you know. I want to do my part. I want to really make full efforts to find the right girl for me like this. So how we can deny that person, you know, whatever. I, thought, yeah, I just told people the same thing that I just tell you. Just engage in devotional service and kind of Krishna sends you your husband or whatever you're looking for, that's fine. If he doesn't, then you didn't need it. And generally, those who please Krishna, if they have some material desire, he used, he helps to fulfill that. But you're not going to please Krishna by chasing after something material. Same question. Whatever you want, just stay in devotional service. And then either you'll give it up because you get a higher taste, that comes by devotional service. The sweetness of devotional service will overshadow your desire for the material thing. You'll think, oh, what do I want that puny thing any for? This is much better. Or, and Krishna, or Krishna might just give it to you. It's up to him. We saw it in Gitanagri a lot. Yeah. Men came from nowhere and married the women. <laughs> right in the middle of nowhere in Grenagri. From Shalagam and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. I mean, husbands just appeared from every place? Is that what he's saying? In, in, in many ways, those that got interested in Christian consciousness, they came, they stayed on the dam, but the next thing they knew, there was weddings going on. <laughs> when the women said, but we're in the middle of nowhere, when, where's the man going to come? They just kept serving and staying in the temple. Yeah. And Krishna reigns. Yeah, they dropped out of the sky. Krishna <laughs> can do everything and anything. <laughs> Yeah, and if you want to get rid of your husband or wife, stay engaged in devotional service. It may work that way also. <laughs> but that's a good point, much because yeah, friction is because I've seen you know you much you know in the nineties. Well, it still is, but at that time, you know, Gitanagi was like out in the boonies. <laughs> We had so many single girls that didn't know where to find boys for them, and they just dropped out of the sky. Yeah. <laughs> it was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. people came for Ratiatra, and then they said, oh, we like the temple very much. And they stayed, and they, you know, they got all involved in service, and they chose one of the girls, and that's how they got married. <laughs> like yeah. that, one after another. Yeah. Weddings are going on every day. <laughs> Sukhavah Mataji, go, go ahead, Mother. 
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance to all glory to Shiva Prabhupada. In the point what uh, we were talking about, like we can leave certain things to Krishna to help us with and provide us with. But uh, what is the when do we think that we should leave it to Krishna and when should we work hard for those things? There is a like, is there a cutoff limit or something like when, what, what should we, we can't stop acting or working towards certain things in life. Can we? Uh, but if you put too much effort in those things, you waste time. Okay. Leave everything to Krishna and make a little effort in that direction to secure something, but not that you become bent out of shape because something don't happen or you have to really work on it. Therefore, Bhakti Vinodha Kaur mentions that in the Shiksha, Chaitanya Shikshamrita, that one should, you know, endeavor for material things just at a minimum. Mm. You need clothing. You, know, you might, someone might need a husband or a wife. You know. Or someone might need some something. Uh, you make some effort in that direction, but you say, "Well, it's up to you, Lord. If you want it to happen, it will happen. If you don't want it to happen, it won't happen." <laughs> <laughs> our, we don't center our life around getting things in this material world. We center our life around serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. Are you still in India? Sukhava, are you still in India? No, no, I'm back here, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's a nice question, Mataji. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Yeah. I it, it, Marge, it when, uh, when you were answering the question, it reminded me of your example that you mentioned earlier. You tried to purchase something two, three times, it didn't go through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Marge. I, I was just thinking about that because what's coming to my mind is over endeavoring. That is one of the, you know, that we hear from a Shastra that when, you know, I, I know in my life, I've gone through that as when I try to do something over, I try, 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 I try, I just go crazy, I go berserk, I lose my own mind. And the Lord is saying, <laughs> don't do it. Why are you cracking your head? You're crazy or something, you know? So that's what's coming to my mind, over-endeavoring. Yay! When it comes to computers, I don't know what I'm doing. So I guess I'm <laughs> things. I try to buy something online. It's like... <laughs> I ask the young people much when it comes to computers. I'm bad at it too. <laughs> Not a qualification for spiritual advancement. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> Thank God, right? Thank Krishna for that, Maharaj. <laughs> oh, Prem Kishori Mataji, go ahead. Thank you, um, Anusya Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. I'll go to Prabhupada, i to you. Maharaj, asking the, thank you for the nice class. Asking in the same lines as uh, Sukhava Mataji and uh, Sridhari Mataji was asking that, uh, and you have been instructing, be a minimalist, be a minimalist, be a minimalist. But the being a minimalist, um, I mean, I'm seeking clarification, is a, sounds like a very relative definition. Like I could be a minimalist by just eating dal rice and other person is a minimalist but by eating dal rice, yogurt and salad and some papad and some pickle. So that's one point. And the other point is, so what sets the standard of being a minimalist, which goes along with the verse of Isha Vashimidam Sarvam. Uh, and the other point is, uh, Maharaj, uh, the part of over endeavoring. So I have still not been able to understand that uh, when do I define that, okay, I am over endeavoring or I am over ambitious or I am being an escapist. Because 
I have seen, uh, I'm not judging, but I, I still don't understand the position of other person, but whatever snippet I have seen in the life of other devotees, for example, one time, one devotee uh, called me when I was doing this 18 day classes with Mangalore that his uncle has died and he has um, a land that he wants to, uh, that he wants to give to the temple. Uh, and then as the story goes on, it, it comes out that there are, the land is in the court and he's saying if he gets the land back from the court, then he will give like 10% of it to the temple. So is it being an escapist that, okay, if I get it, I'll give it. And the second incident I saw that there was this nice boy, young boy who was studying in a uh, university of California. Uh, but he just gave up because he found it too difficult. But it was, a, it was the subject of his choice, but it was difficult. Then he came to Gita Nagri, he lived with us for a few months and then he disappeared from Gita Nagri too. So the, I don't know what happened to him, but situations like this made me wonder that am I being uh, an escapist because it's so difficult or am I just and using Krishna consciousness as a mask uh, to say, okay, no, no, I'm just going to chant Hare Krishna. But in the heart of heart, I'm still burning with these uh, confusions. Well, each situation might be different for the individual on the material level. On the spiritual level, is that the devotee thinks, you know, is this going to help my spiritual life or not? Is this going to take away from my spiritual life? Do I need this for my material life? So you make some endeavor in that direction. But you don't become uh, over infatuated or over absorbed in these things. Because even if you do get them, what's the guarantee that you're going to be, you be benefited by such things? So this is called price jitya. Enough, I'm sorry, not price jitya, but uh, what is it called? Um, it's called overing endeavor. Yeah, prayasa, if I, if the word prayasa. Yeah. The Bhakti Vinoda Kaur explains that in Nectar and uh, Bhakti Bhakti Loka. Rupa Goswami makes it, he also mentions it in Nectar of Instruction. So a little endeavor in, in the direction of achieving something is natural. But you have to be attuned. If it's working out or is it not working out, maybe I'm on the right. So nobody's going to be there to tell you every minute. So you, you sometimes you have to pray to Krishna and you just have to think, what do you want me to do, Lord? <laughs> uh, it's an individual thing. You have to know, know yourself and know whether it's worth trying for such things or whether it's worth not trying for such things. When it comes to helping other people, then you might put the maximum amount of time and energy in that. When it comes to your own personal needs or desires, then you have to you have to somehow or other see is it necessary or not? Now, no one's going to tell you directly. Maybe some friend will tell you if you ask, but generally, like I I could have thought, well, I didn't, you know, I tried to buy this thing online today. So I did everything according to the rules of the, you know, the computer. <laughs> and everything seemed to be right, but it just didn't work. So I thought, all right, obviously Krishna doesn't want me to waste time and get it. So I could think, well, I could try again later. But I thought, nah, I'm not going <laughs> to. So I could have had a choice to either further pursue it or not. And then I came to that conclusion that, I'm, that I shouldn't. So the question is, what you're doing, does it depend on your Krishna consciousness? Or does it not depend on your Krishna? If it depends on your Krishna consciousness, then you may put extra efforts in that.
It's like if you want to preach and you're running into problems. Because you're trying to preach, you stick with it. You work with it and you try to overcome the obstacle. Okay. Thank you, Gurmaj. I, 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 I think I understood the principle. Thank you. You have to decide at one point. That's a very good question, Prem Kishore, because I'm sure, you know, there are people, many that are having that same challenge and question and trying to understand where is the cutoff line as we say, or where do we stop and not keep pushing? Thank you for the question. Very nice question. Any other questions from devotees? I, I just have one more clarification, if I may ask. Yes, please. Uh, Gurmaj, is it okay? Uh, in yeah. the continuation of... So, Gurmaj, like, thank you. I, I think I'm absorbing and I'm going to meditate on the principle uh, that you gave. Uh, but uh, in my little experience with ISKCON, um, I have seen that, or maybe because I have that kind of a conditioning, that is why I'm seeing, and maybe others have never seen, that uh, some devotees, when they grow old, uh, there is a sense of... Uh, resentment that we didn't save enough that we didn't invest enough and now we are old and there's no one to take care of us um so maybe uh so maybe in in my young age i could have done this or that so i don't i mean i, I mean of course they are devotees and they have given their life to the movement with all that due respect i see a sense of insecurity maybe because i am insecure i see it maybe it's illusory i don't know i'm bewildered but i see it and i ask some other devotees they also see it and i and most of the devotees here are more experienced than me like uh, if i ask mother anasuya mother shri devi have you seen it anything like this so gurbaj like how do is there a is there a book <laughs> is there a lecture <laughs> or is there a reference one one can uh, you know is there a manu samita i have to go and read like how do you decide all these things uh, when you see these different colors of uh, devotional uh, service ah, it depends how surrendered you are the more you surrender the more you depend on krishna the more you're surrendered to Maya, the more you'll try to control and manipulate the material energy. He was the core, it didn't work. He didn't have any occupation, but he maintained a big family. Christian Lord Chaitanya asked him how he did it. Because he had complete faith that if he serves the Lord, the Lord will provide everything he needs. We, yes. judge, we judge things from a material perspective, not including the Lord's mercy into that. And then we have, then we make decisions based on that. Okay, I have to go because. Thank I you very much. Yeah, I have a program coming up this afternoon. Thank you so much, Marsh, for your time. And thank you to all the devotees for joining us. And thank you for the wonderful questions and discussion.